Ms. Lane, would you like to make a statement? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if the full scope of what I want to say will be permitted in my personal statement, as my experience of government since March 2020 now consists almost entirely of being shut down, silenced, and punished. I expect that I may not be allowed to finish. If not, let me just say that my whole personal statement will appear on my account on Facebook tonight, unless Facebook again kills my account. The censorship since March 2020 has been an astonishing aspect of this entire uh, COVID thing since it began. Uh, but I am interested to hear that the prosecution is following my Facebook posts. That's very interesting. In hindsight, we can see so many things. The computer modeling which justified the start of lockdowns was wrong. Prominent government officials on the national stage lied and flip-flopped. The CDC continues to reverse course and quietly remove statements from their website. And definitions of medical interventions have been changed. Mountains of scientific data have been released, sometimes only under court order to show that the medical narrative was full of holes. But that narrative was nonetheless adopted by official law, meaning that all Americans were told they must adopt medical measures dictated by government or suffer the consequences, be they economic, social, or legal. Central District Health, or CDH, and other government bodies relied on the bad data and on the marketing slogans such as flatten the curve to restrict the constitutionally guaranteed rights of Americans. Above all, compliance was sought. Members of the CDH Health Board actually said they wouldn't have to criminalize non-compliance if only we would obey voluntarily, a sentiment which completely undermines the concept of liberty and sounds suspiciously like the abuser's scapegoat, don't make me hurt you. To communicate such things as government officials does not make a threat more civilized, but less. I find threats from government who would use police force against regular people for breathing freely and gathering with friends to be infinitely less civilized than bucket banging. The list of government overreach that has now been proven to be unnecessary and scientifically ill-advised goes on and on. COVID and the government responses to it are what ought to have been on trial all along. With hindsight, we now know, for instance, that the U.S. Supreme Court would have overturned limits on religious gatherings as unconstitutional. Just imagine, if we had a time machine today and went back to CDH in 2020, they would not have allowed us in to tell us what we now know. Because of the systemic, systematic discrimination against our viewpoint, we literally would not be allowed in the door by a government which believed it had the ability and the authority to control a virus by controlling people. I can hear the objections to my words, but we didn't know we were doing our best in a fluid situation. Some of us knew. Because we wouldn't or couldn't wear on our faces a political symbol of compliance, we were not able to enter the doors of government. While CDC was flip-flopping and Deborah Burks was lying, their official misinformation was cited by local governments that were trying to figure out how to control germs. With the hindsight of two years, you can now watch the videos of CDH meetings in which health board members can be heard to say things like, quote, if we do our jobs right, it will look like an overreaction, end quote. And, quote, maybe it's reactionary, but sometimes the best leadership is reactionary, end quote. Those are both actual quotes from CDH health board members who voted to exclude dissenting viewpoints from the conversation. But I'm not suggesting that those board members be punished for not understanding their job. In 2020, confusion was everywhere, to be sure. But I am stating unequivocally that the silencing of us was wrong. What we did in the wake of the silencing needs to be recognized for what it was, justified, lawful, and necessary. During my trial, I told the court that I attempted to be heard in many ways throughout 2020. Eventually, I took my loud voice and grabbed a bucket at a protest, which led to this unjust charge of disrupting the peace. Now I'd like to tell you about some of the things that happened following the arrest as the discrimination continued. On the night of December 8th, I was threatened by Boise Mayor who publicly stated she would hunt me. She also said, quote, Boise isn't the place for you, end quote. The next day, police showed up at my door to arrest me, which seems out of proportion for a 12-minute protest in daylight hours that didn't even qualify for a noise ordinance citation. When I asked the first officer what the charge was and he said trespass, I knew that wasn't right. The other officer quickly corrected him. I learned the charge was disrupting the peace, which requires the element of maliciousness be present. Of course, I was not malicious, which anyone who understood the facts of the COVID situation and of our failing government could see. The judge who signed the warrant 
which the arresting officers did not actually have with them and which was sealed so that I could not obtain a copy for three weeks, authorized residential execution of the warrant between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Again, a situation which seems disproportionate to a 12-minute bucket protest on public property. Keep in mind, they didn't even need to issue a warrant as Idaho criminal rules clearly state a preference for summons. Furthermore, sidewalk protest in, in neighborhoods is not illegal in Idaho. On December 15th, I attended the large parking lot protest at CDH with hundreds of other people who were also locked out because their viewpoint did not match that of government. I personally witnessed rooftop snipers monitoring the crowd of parents, babies, and children. Sheriffs should have been present to protect the rights of Americans who were being shut out of a public meeting in a public building. They were contacted many times that year, and I had long conversations with the undersheriff, Scott Johnson, about the need for them to support our constitutional rights. But instead of sheriffs assisting, we experienced a chilling perversion of law enforcement and got Boise PD snipers aimed at us. On December 30th, I came to the courthouse for my first required court appearance where I was denied service in the lobby because I was not wearing a mask. For close to an hour, I was threatened with arrest and told by law enforcement to leave the lobby until finally a single, compassionate, intelligent clerk made her way over to me near the door and helped me complete my paperwork so that I could leave. In February, I returned to the courthouse again, this time for my court-ordered arraignment, and was not allowed in the lobby. After calling the court administrator several times to explain that arraignment via Zoom was inappropriate because all Idahoans are guaranteed access to the courthouse, and further, that I'm inept with technology, and after missing two phone calls from the judge while I stood in front of the courthouse, where I did not hear my phone, I received a bench warrant for failure to appear. In September of 2021, I was again denied access to one of my hearings. The first and third floors were now accessible by unmasked individuals, but the second, fourth, and fifth floors were not, and my hearing was on the second floor. I sat outside the hearing room door and was approached by an officer who told me that I was not allowed to be on the second floor without a mask. I asked him where the germs stop, since masks were only required on the second, fourth, and fifth floors. He indicated that they stopped at the sign near the top of the elevator. My rights have been violated repeatedly because I would not obey arbitrary, unjust, or ever-changing rules, and because of my personal stance on a controversial issue, an issue which is being illuminated more every day by actual data, as opposed to the misguided fear-mongering. The branches of government seem to have joined together to ensure that only one viewpoint would ever make it through the door. That's not good enough. It's un-American. Many people see this. Some of them work in this building or in the police department or the hospitals. Those who haven't already lost jobs and incomes are afraid they will, and they're afraid to be ostracized, to lose family and friends over their viewpoint. They whisper to people like me that they're glad I'm taking a stand, even though they themselves can't do so. These people, government employees and others, sometimes defy in small ways so as to remain unseen. We of dissenting political views are not such a minority after all. Most just feel bullied and have remained silent out of fear. As many of us said from the very beginning, the science is never settled. Real science changes all the time. That is why principles must remain firm. I stand on those principles of freedom of speech, right to assemble and to worship freely, right to due process and to equal access of a representative government. All of those timeless principles have been violated here in Idaho since March 2020. I am here today under duress. I know which things are right and which things are wrong. My government is not doing right things. It is unjust. Justice would have required that I was never denied access to CDH, that I was never arrested, and that I was never denied entrance to the courthouse or received additional arrest for failure to appear, that I was not denied entrance to my own hearings. Justice would have happened if my First Amendment rights had been protected in this case thrown out long ago. Justice would require that any person who follows meaningless orders or succumbs to the social pressure to wear a mask would not be allowed to serve on my jury. That was not a jury of my peers. If justice had been served, I would not be here today with a guilty verdict hanging over me. Given all that, I do not believe that any sentence you can give me today would be just. I repeat, I'm here under duress and I have now said what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ling, for those comments. I appreciate them.